So you want to learn about Ouroboros, huh kid? Then you're in the right place. This video will tell you everything you need to know about interlinking, including when to use the forms, which arts you should be using on each, and how you get the most damage out of them along with everything else that you might want to know. Full warning though, this video will contain spoilers, including a few minor story details, so you have been warned. So how do the Ouroboros forms work? Once you've unlocked them at the end of chapter 2, you can interlink and become an Ouroboros anytime you like by simply pressing left on the D-pad. Whilst transformed, your health bars are replaced by a heat gauge which gradually rises as you stay in the form. This practically makes you invincible as even though you will still take damage, it does not appear to make any difference in the form as there is no visible change in the heat gauge from what I have seen. That said, you are still vulnerable to debuffs, effects like knockback and blow down, as well as arts which inflict things like break and topple, so you are in no way unstoppable. Once the heat gauge hits the maximum, the ability will overheat, and the transformation will end putting it on a cooldown. This cooldown lasts for around a minute, which means you'll have to go a long time without the immortality that the form grants, which obviously is pretty bad. You can cancel the interlink at any time though, which will not put the ability on cooldown, so it's recommended to cancel before you reach that point. You can even even cancel the ability whilst in the middle of an art, so you don't have to worry too much about when you choose to end it. That said, you are unable to cancel during a talent art, as the animation must be finished before you transform back, even if it overheats. In the event you do overheat your Ouroboros form though, you can activate your chain attack which can completely refresh the cooldown, back down to nil. Time still moves during a chain attack animation, which is why buffs and debuffs expire during it, and therefore, the interlink ability will be cooling down in the background as time passes. When interlinked, you will then obtain your Ouroboros art. However, there is no cooldown and instead you simply cannot use the same art in repetition, meaning that at minimum you must alternate between two different arts. The Ouroboros arts are much stronger than your auto attacks however, so it's best that you use them as much as physically possible. But now that we know all of the basics, we can now go over how to use these babies in battle. By far, the most important thing you want to do during combat is raise your interlink levels. To do so, you and your Ouroboros partner must simply perform a number of fusion arts. This is understandably difficult to do in the earlier stages of the game, when you only have access to one fusion art at a time, but once you unlock the other slots, you'll find it incredibly easy to raise your rank. I also recommend activating the Fusion First command in the Tactics menu, as this encourages your AI allies to do the same thing and focus on increasing their interlink levels. This also prevents your allies from wasting the ability, as they will from then on only ever interlink when they are at level 2 or 3, which is the maximum. The only exception to this rule is when an ally has very low health, as they may activate the form prematurely to save themselves from an early grave. This does in one sense waste the progress you made, however, as the moment you exit Ouroboros, your interlink level is reset back down to zero, and you have to start again, so be conscious of when you are cancelling the form. But now that we've answered the how, let's take a look at the why. There are a multitude of benefits that you gain from raising your interlink levels, with the most noticeable one being a straight up increase to your damage output. Judging from the difference in damage, I would estimate that an interlink level 3 Ouroboros deals roughly 2-3 to three times as much damage as a level 0, making it more than worth it to gain levels alone. Additionally, you also gain a bonus depending on your class when you first activate the interlink. I covered this in my previous video, but to go over it quickly, attackers deal damage to all enemies, defenders increase their own aggro, and healers heal all allies with the amount of each depending on what interlink level you are. Lastly, the final difference it makes is how quickly you can build up your talent gauge. At level 0 in the early game, it's practically impossible to even build up enough talent gauge to use your talent art in the first place, making it a necessity that you at least raise your level to 1. You can and then fill up your talent gauge by cancelling your arts. At first, this is only by cancelling after an auto attack, but later you will be able to cancel arts into one another after you have unlocked the ability via their soul tree. Doing so raises the heat level ever so slightly, but it does allow you to obtain your talent arts much 
easier than before. Another function that you will occasionally want to use is the switch function. This swaps between the Kevus and Agnes versions of the Ouroboros forms, allowing you to make quick decisions and be able to control the battle. Each Ouroboros form has its own strengths and circumstances when it excels, but we'll discuss that in depth later in the video. When switching, your talent gauge does carry over, meaning you could use one form to build it up quickly and the other talent art if that's much better suited to taking down the enemy. I don't recommend swapping too much however, as there is a short delay between each swap, where you are unable to do anything which in tandem is wasting your time within the form. To get the most out of the forms in combat though, you will need to fill out the soul tree. This is done through using SP, which is obtained via much of the side content in the game, including side quests, opening containers and even defeating some unique monsters. After obtaining enough SP, you can then upgrade your Ouroboros forms by unlocking nodes on the soul tree, with each then unlocking new ones that you can obtain. There are many different types of nodes, including new arts and skills, each with their own upgrade, stat increases and boosts to your heat level efficiency. I recommend going for the skills or arts that you are most interested in to start off with, as these effects will tend to have a much larger influence in battle, and it's likely that you'll need to unlock some of the others to get them anyway. Once you unlock the Agnes Ouroboros forms at the end of chapter 3, you also unlock the ability to link skills to the opposite forms. You cannot link arts for obvious reasons, but any skill, stat increase or anything else is free game. The other slot for skill linking is obtained later in the game, when you unlock and complete each character's ascension quest. I'm planning on doing a more in-depth guide on where and when you can complete these missions at a later time, but once you have completed each character's side story, the other slot is unlocked. In terms of what to link, I recommend either a skill that will work well for the other form, or even more heat reduction. The longer you have in your Ouroboros forms before overheating, the better, and gaining just a little bit more time just by linking a skill is more than worth it. So how should you build the forms? Well each one works differently and has its own abilities, so let's take a closer look at every one of them. Let's firstly start with Noah's Ouroboros. Noah's form is all based around criticals, having the highest crit chance of any of the forms and multiple skills to increase their effectiveness. Specifically the skill Omnipresent Blade is the one that we want to focus on, as this will increase our damage dealt and crit chance by 20% on each critical hit, when upgraded. With that in mind, we can now consider consider which arts to use, and I recommend Phantom Slash, Unison Strike and Bounding Edge. Each of these arts are effective in dealing high damage and gaining criticals quickly, especially Bounding Edge as it is AoE, so make sure to use this one a lot. You may however want to swap out Phantom Slash for something else, as this is our first level 3 art. Some of the Ouroboros' arts only inflict an effect when level 3, and for the most case they are useless, as the stars would need to align for their effect to actually be usable. There is a strategy which I will discuss later which makes them kind of work but I would avoid them for the most part, with Phantom Slash being the exception as the art does at least deal good damage and break is the start of the chain and will interrupt all enemies. Glorious Wings also isn't too bad but it doesn't help to build his passive. Rolling Smash is awful and Dragon Tail is low damage but can be used if you want another AoE. Noah's Talent Art is also pretty good dealing massive damage and being AoE, but it also has a secret. At the start of chapter 6, Noah's Ouroboros can use a special talent art when at interlink level 3 and very high heat, where he pulls the sword of the end from his chest and slashes the enemy, inflicting them with the debuff Reduce All. Hey guys, Future JB back once again. It actually turns out that you can use the Sword of Origin, not the end, if you were using Noah's talent art Unlimited Blade and interlink whilst it's active. So yeah do that. Mio's form is fortunately a little less complicated. Like her main class Zephyr, it is completely based around evading attacks, but this time it's on steroids. Each time Mio evades an attack, she deals damage back to the enemy and increases the amount of damage she deals, and we therefore want art that can help her do exactly that. I recommend using Deadly Twister for obvious reasons, Radiant Ring to force enemies to target her, and either Jaguar Slash or Dual Fang. Jaguar Slash is super quick and is a good way of getting bleed onto an enemy, whereas Dual Fang deals more damage and extends combo durations, which will be important in a little bit. The other two are both interlink level 3 arts, and therefore in my opinion aren't that good, especially if you choose to run Phantom Slash on Noah. Next up is Lance, and his form is one of the more situations 
additional ones. This is mainly due to his skill Strength and Adversity, which increases his damage based on how many enemies are targeting him. Now that might seem rather straightforward, but from my experience, it can sometimes be a challenge to get the enemies to target you, especially when there are more defenders on the team. That's why it's imperative that you use lands as a defender, as the bonus aggro when you interlink is crucial to make this form work well, if at all. Burning Rain is also a must, being an AoE attack that boosts his aggro, and pairing that with Ray of Punishment allows you to deal out the damage. I then personally like to use Titan Fist as my final art, as Shackle Block is a great effect, and the art deals good single target damage, but Incredible Guard is also very good when used in the right circumstances, especially against super bosses. On the Agnes side is Senna's Ouroboros, which really knows how to throw some damage numbers around. Her skill Explosive Spirit is incredible at annihilating enemies, as each time you get an effect like Knockback or Blowdown, you get a damage increase on top of the others that she already possesses. Therefore, Hellbound, Mortal Bullet and Dino Upper should all be easy choices, as each inflict a Blowdown or Knockback. Mortal Bullet in particular can inflict Knockback three times in one usage, so you will see those high damage numbers very easily when duking it out as Senna. That just leaves Tyon and Uni left. These forms act as opposites to one another, as Uni's strength lies in buffing her allies, and Tyon's is in debuffing the enemy. Uni in particular is based more around supporting her allies with skills like Wings of Healing and Unceasing Blessing, and this is also replicated within her arts, as they are all based around supporting her allies. I recommend using Feather Sanctuary, Typhoon Field, and Raptor Raid though, as this allows for a nice blend of support and DPS, with Feather Sanctuary being the main art to be used. It grants all allies a random buff, which not only empowers her, but also helps the entire team. And with Fiona's class Signifer on the field, which can share their buffs with everyone else, you'll find that everybody will be stacked with buffs, making it challenging for the enemy to take you down. You may also want to consider using Liberty Wing. It isn't actually a bad art, as if Tyan and Uni are your only healers, then nobody will be able to revive whilst intellect, and this at least gives you an option to do so. Lightning Arrow also isn't bad, but I preferred having AoEs on her instead. Tyon is then structured more as an offensive support than Uni, as Eclipse and Strength Sapper skills are great at messing with the enemies. I also like to use arts that do that as well, such as Body Double, Atomize, and Fleeting Form. Body Double and Atomize in particular are broken, as they allow you to stack tons of debuffs on enemies, and the hit of Atomize comes out so quick that you can cancel it near instantly. I also prefer Fleeting Form over Spirit Raven, as I find it does a better job at healing my allies in the first place, and it can empower this Ouroboros even more when Uni's buff skill is linked. So now our Ouroboros forms are built with the right arts, and we have an understanding of how they work in combat, which leaves only one question. When should you interlink? Timing is everything when it comes to making the most out of the Ouroboros forms, and activating them at the right time can make all the difference in battle. Using it early to save yourself also isn't a bad shout, but keep in mind that you cannot be healed whilst in the Ouroboros form. For the most part though, you're gonna want to save the form until it's level 3, or is needed to save yourself, whether that be by guarding a powerful attack, or just extending your life until you can activate a chain attack. There is however another strategy, which could influence when you want to interlink. Now, trying this is only really recommended for when you've practically maxed the Ouroboros forms and have a lot of time on the clock before they overheat, but the strategy is using interlink level 3 arts one after another to constantly combo all enemies and is the closest equivalent to topple locking in this game. This does require you to go into your settings and change your interlink control type from player to party, but this then lets you control the entire party's interlink, allowing you to wait until all of them are level 3 before activating them all at once. You can then use a combination of their arts to combo them one after another to either deal large damage or grind items with burst. For either route, this requires at least two Ouroboruses though, as Noah and Mios are the only ones who possess break. That said, the sheer amount of time that it would take to set this up, along with the fact that break can be resisted, makes this strategy not really practical, but it is a way you might be able to cheese some of the super bosses. You may also be curious if you should make use of your level 3 interlink to guarantee an Ouroboros chain. The choice is all
ultimately up to you, but activating a chain attack normally will in almost all circumstances deal more damage than if you were to use it while still interlinked, albeit at the cost of it taking more time to complete. Therefore, if you know what you're doing with chain attacks, I recommend you simply wait to overheat and use it afterwards, but if you're not clued up on how they work, then go for it as you pretty much can't go wrong with an Ouroboros chain. If chain attacks are something that many of you are unsure about though, then let me know in the comments and I can make a guide going over how to use them properly and how to hit some insane damage numbers. If that is something that you'd be interested to see, click that subscribe button as it truly helps me out a ton and you'll be notified first when my video is uploaded. But with all that said and done, I hope you've enjoyed the video and that it's helped you come to understand how to interlink correctly in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. That said, I'll see you all in the next video, so until next time, peace.